Disclaimer, we do not claim the outcome of this fictional fight to be factual. Any battle pitted with any outcome, depending on the circumstances. We are simply choosing the most likely outcome and the one that will fit the most circumstances. So be kind in the comments and remember that we love you. Enjoy the video. Fictional fight rules! No prep time. No outside help unless it is a major part in a character, like Pikachu and Ash, Jack and Daxter, or Gara and his mother Sand. Non-canon events will be included as long as they are not contradicted by the main canon. You know, we've had a lot of rough battles on fictional fights. It'd be nice to get something a bit more traditional. And what's a more traditional way of fighting than boxing? Uh, don't answer that, it's rhetorical. Ippo Makunochi, the featherweight fighter from Japan. Little Mac, the bite-sized bruiser from the Bronx. Which one of these boxers will win in a battle to the de- Uh, I mean, knockout. This is fictional fights. Ippo Makunochi grew up helping his mother out with the family fishing business. Lifting up all those crates of bait, ice, and whatever else fishers used helped him build up a natural strength he never knew he had. After getting beaten under a bridge, he was saved by Takamura, who inspired him to take up boxing. Wait, is this anime Rocky or anime Karate Kid? Takamura brought Ippo to their gym, and with his trainer Genji by his side, Ippo was soon ready to take on the world. Let's see how he became Japan's featherweight champion. Standing at 5 feet 5 inches and 124 pounds, Makunochi was one of the heaviest hitters. Even from the beginning, it was easy to tell he had something special. When he almost knocked the sandbag off the chain with his bare hands! Ippo is an inboxing whose style revolves around charging in and beating his opponent to the punch. Ironically, he's also very defensive. He takes on Mike Tyson's style of peekaboo. His stance protects his lower face with his fists while his elbows protect his chest. This stance makes it very easy for him to weave and retaliate quickly when he blocks a punch. And you certainly don't want to get countered by him. His punches are powerful enough to send opponents around the same weight as him flying back across the ring. He has many variations to his punches, like the uppercut which can paralyze his victim's legs if the tip of the chin is hit, or feints that he can mix with Saki to make a mirage punch before throwing a real one. In addition to that, he has many signature punches, one of them being the liver blow which is strong enough to break ribs. Then there's the gazelle punch, a leaping uppercut from below so strong it knocks opponents off their feet! Finally, there's his Sunday punch, the Dempsey Roll. Invented by Jack Dempsey, this maneuver is done by shifting the weight in the figure 8 motion while throwing punches. It's a powerful mixture of offense and defense. And while it used to be easily counterable, Ippo evolved it into the freeform Dempsey Roll, which sways so low that he can throw uppercuts while he weaves. Even Takamura was impressed calling it an unlimited freeform high-speed combination that would be impossible to aim a counter towards. He also has the heartbreak shot that he learned from Date-san, which can stop the heart temporarily. Kinda creepy. Yeesh. This strength isn't just for show either. In addition to being ranked number one in the OPF and the top ten worldwide, his abilities can be seen as superhuman. For training, his coach Genji asked him to run eight sets of 800 meters in three minutes. Do you know how fast that is? Hey! Oh, let me do the math. Let's see. Um, that, that would be 2,100 meters per minute, 35 meters per second. <gasps> Ippo is literally traveling at 78 miles per hour. That's faster than the top speed of a cheetah! More impressively is his combat speed. He is able to dodge punches faster than the eye can see, and he is on par with Miata, who is fast enough to create after images. He even reacted to and got through Hayami's shotgun punch, which fired 27 punches before the ref could even react. Even if it took 3 seconds, that's still 9 punches per second. Ippo is also very durable. He never stays down. Even if he's completely unconscious, as long as he can move, he can still fight. He even fought with a fist so broken that the bones were piercing his flesh! And he still used that fist in the fight! 
His incredible stamina allows him to go over 3 rounds and his power lets him defeat opponents who can go for 10. However, Ippo is not perfect. While he's the bane of all outboxes thanks to his rush-in strategy, other inboxes like himself give him quite a bit of trouble. Same with hands. While Ippo can easily handle right-handed foes, left-handed gives him a bit of trouble since they're so rare. They could throw him off his rhythm. But even with these flaws, I still wouldn't want to get in the ring with him. Let's get someone more experienced, like Little Mac. Yeah, <laughs> not me either. With someone of max size and weight, finding a trainer who believes in him is not the easiest task. Luckily, by chance, he happened to meet Jerome Doc Lewis, former heavyweight champion. He began to train Mac immediately. Thanks to Doc's training, Little Mac, who weighs in 107 pounds and stands at a 5 feet 7 inches, became the world champion. Hang on, hang on. Standing at 5 feet 5 inches and 124 pounds, Makunochi was one of the heaviest hitters. You mean Little Mac is the one with the height advantage? <laughs> Irony at its finest. <laughs> I wouldn't be laughing if I were you. Little Mac is capable of beating the largest foes. He's a textbook outboxer, staying back and waiting for the opponent to leave an opening so he can attack. Little Mac uses the popular orthodox stance. It's commonly used in many martial arts, not just boxing. You stand with your weaker side tilted towards your opponent while your dominant side is tilted away. That way, the greater distance allows your dominant side to throw more force with the punches. Little Mac stands with his left side tilted towards his foe, meaning he is right-handed. Which would make sense since the orthodox stance is most commonly used by right-handed boxers. Even Mike Tyson used this stance. It's basic yet effective. Now enough about defense. Let's get on to the punching. Little Mac's main method of attack is countering. He waits for an opponent to attack by watching for visual and sound cues and then strikes their opening. Sometimes he can even beat them to the punch! He counters jabs, hooks, uppercuts, and his Sunday punch, the Star Punch. Once he sees a big chance, he'll unleash this beastly blow. The longer he holds it back, the stronger he'll become. It is a bit predictable though, if it's used at the wrong time, his opponents can easily see it coming and dodge it. However, Little Mac is still very fast. He beat Piston Honda, who can outrun bullet trains. And by looking at that timer up there, we can see the fastest punch he's faced comes out in a fourth of a second, or four punches per second. We should quickly mention that Little Mac has a transformation called Giga Mac. He sacrifices speed and his strategy for more power. Since it turns Little Mac into the opponents he beats regularly, and he's capable of beating his own transformations, it's pretty much useless. It's not like he'd need it anyways. Little Mac has beaten Mr. Sandman, who can punch through brick walls. A common misconception is that Mr. Sandman destroyed the building with one punch. But here you see him switching arms, so the feat is debunked. And he beat Bald Bull, who withstood a bull's charge. He beat Don Flamenco as well, who is a literal bullfighter. He doesn't wave with capes, he actually fights the bulls. However, despite beating heavyweight boxers like Mike Tyson, Little Mac himself is no heavyweight. He's still only 107 pounds and can easily be swept off his feet. He can even be one-shot by Mike Tyson. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to have a large stamina with that tiny body. Throwing and missing too many punches can tire him out. To make up for his lack of strength, he has two perfect strategies of dodging and countering and building up damage until his opponents collapse, or just hitting their weak points. It's just like Doc Lewis says, dodge and counter. Yeah, when Doc actually decides to be helpful. What's your favorite flower, son? Mine's chocolate. Hmm. <laughs> his dodge and counter strategy alone helped Mac become the world champion over the course of a single year. I don't even think that's possible in actual boxing. Little guys can do big things too! Let's see if defeating Ippo is one of those big things. It's time for a fictional fight! Ding ding ding!
the count has started and I don't think he can recover from a death. What the? The challenger has a stood up! Mecha puts up his guard, but it's a broken! Ippo goes for the kill! Mamma mia! The, the champion is a down! T TKO! Ladies and gentlemen, your new champion! Makunochi Ippo! Wahoo! It feels so refreshing to have a regular knockout for once instead of a gruesome, gory death. Yeah, I prefer the brutal violence. So let's go over how Ippo won this tough match. First is power. Ippo is strong enough to nearly knock sandbags off the chain, while Mac can barely make the move. If you think about it, Mac's Star Punch doesn't even do devastating damage unless it's fully charged. And even then, it's still not a guaranteed knockdown. He may have beaten Mr. Sandman who can punch through brick walls, but Mac himself can't even damage King Hippo through his sewer lid or Glass Joe through his headgear without knocking them off first. Meanwhile, Ippo can bruise others through gloves and headgear. Even if we gave Mac the strength advantage, it's not big enough to help him win. Especially since Ippo outclasses him everywhere else, like speed for example. According to Punch-Out's timer, Mac can throw 4 punches per second, which is nothing compared to the 9 Ippo can react to. When it comes to stamina and durability, Mac has faced much harder, but Ippo can take much more. Ippo can continue to fight, even if he's unconscious, just as long as he can still move. He'll always get up no matter what, while Mac quits after 3 downs, even if they're in different rounds! Mac also gets tired after missing too many punches, having his punches blocked, and of course by getting hit. Ippo can go for 8 rounds compared to Mac's 3, and he can even wear down the stamina of those who can go for 10 rounds! Not only that, but Ippo can spend entire rounds punching without stopping, even when he's unable to breathe. <laughs> Max height advantage ends up being a disadvantage when it comes to the freeform Dempsey roll. Since it's always so low, Mac wouldn't be able to deal with it since he's taller than Ippo. Mac may have fought a wide variety of opponents, but there's no variety in their punches. Mac has never dealt with opponents who can stun, counter his counters, or switch up styles mid-match like Ippo, and Ippo's opponents can. And Mac himself is as basic as you can get. Jabs, hooks, counters, uppercuts, all Ippo has dealt with and perfected retaliations against. So while Ippo is completely a new challenge for Mac, Little Mac is just another Friday fight to Ippo. There's just too much going against the poor Nintendo boxer. This flyweight is going goodbye weight. The winner is... Ippo. Well, that's another episode done. Yup. Well, I'm off to Japan. Wait, what? See ya! Come back! Take me with you! Lucky jerk. Get ready for the next battle. <laughs>